John Reed's archaeological investigation has revealed that once the Romans had dug in around the fort, the next stage was a terrifying aerial bombardment. The spread of missiles, the number of missiles, and the mix of missiles tell us that the Romans were throwing everything at the hilltop at the one time. We know it's at the one time because they're all in the same archaeological strata. We know that there are stone balls, lead bullets, and iron bolt heads all coming in simultaneously. A continuous hail of ballistic weapons would have had two key outcomes. Suppressing fire to allow Roman troops to storm the fort without being subjected to return fire, and to cause maximum panic among the women and children holed up in the hill fort. This is where experts believe Rome's killing machine, the Manubalista, was at its most effective. But could such an ancient weapon really live up to the hype? Does reality match the legend? Alan Wilkins is about to put his recreation of the Manubalista through its paces. We've got a good coverage on that, on both sides, even without standing up to do it. I can cover from corner to corner on the background, no problem at all. And as they come in closer, I can still go right over. With the Manabalista in position, an iron bolt, just like the one found at Burns Wharf, is fitted into place. Ready to shoot? Yeah, okay. Ah, look at the power of that. Oh, no. Skewed it right through. In the hands of trained Roman soldiers, the Manabalista would have been a weapon of deadly precision. Like a modern sniper rifle, it was easy to maneuver, quick to reload, and could launch a 7-inch armor-piercing projectile at over 70 miles an hour with terrifying accuracy. The Manabalista far outranged and outpaced any weapon the enemy could throw at the Romans, giving the invading army the edge in any assault. 